Hello, and welcome back to the Cosmic Companion. In this week's episode of Astronomy News with the Cosmic Companion, we learned about the unfortunate fate of Comet Atlas, which recently shattered as it approached the Sun, quashing dreams of what could have been a magnificent celestial spectacle. Next, we'll learn how temperatures seen on worlds orbiting alien stars are often lower than theories predict, and we'll discuss a new model that could potentially explain these strange findings. We also take a look at how a new range of instruments, both on Earth and in space, could help us search for life around white dwarfs, the corpses of dead stars that were once the size of the Sun. In a special interview, we welcome Dr. Ann Verkey to the show, Head of Planetary Radar Studies for Arecibo Observatory. She recently made the news with her discovery of an unusual face mask on asteroid 1998 OR2, which safely passed Earth this week. Comet Atlas, once a contender to become the greatest comet in a generation, has shattered into dozens of pieces. A massive iceberg in space heated, as all comets do, as it approached the Sun. Astronomers believe uneven heating of the comet may have caused fissures to develop through parts of the nucleus, or the main body of the comet. These cracks would have spread through the icy body, cleaving the comet into fragments both large and small. The Hubble Space Telescope fortunately took a pair of images showing the comet flying apart into dozens of pieces, many of which were as large as a typical house. Astronomers studying planets around other stars have noticed something unusual. Temperatures on massive worlds orbiting near their parent stars seem to be lower than theories predicted. Most of these worlds are tidally locked to their stars, with one face always pointing towards their local star, much as the face of the moon always points to Earth. A group of researchers from Cornell University have now developed a new mathematical model suggesting the side of these worlds facing their suns experience temperatures hundreds or possibly even thousands of degrees warmer than astronomers have previously measured. On massive worlds caught in this gravitational trap, chemical reactions could be far different on each side of the planet, potentially resulting in significant differences in chemistry, geology, climate, and even the potential for life. A new generation of telescopes, both on and above the Earth, could soon make it possible to search for signs of extraterrestrial life on exoplanets surrounding white dwarf stars. These tiny stellar remnants are the remains of dead stars collapsed to about the size of the Earth. As stars like our Sun die, they go through periods of shrinking and swelling as they heat up and cool over time. This process can destroy planets near the star, and it is unlikely, however possible, that life forms on another world might survive the experience. If even primitive life survived such an event or rose from a once dead planet, Astronomers may soon be able to see telltale traces of certain gases in the atmospheres of these distant worlds. This week on Astronomy News with the Cosmic Companion, we talk to you Dr. Ann Berkey. Dr. Berkey heads planetary radar studies for the world-famous Arecibo Observatory in Puerto Rico. 
She recently discovered the distinctive face mask on asteroid 1998-OR2, which passed Earth on April 29th. We are delighted to have her on the show. Welcome to the show, Dr. Perky. Thank you. So we just uh, found out recently about one of your one of your discoveries, and it's quite appropriate for this time. Tell us what you found. So we were observing a near-Earth asteroid at the Receive Observatory that is called 52768 1992 OR2. So it's an asteroid that was discovered already in 1992, and at the Arecibo Observatory we have the world's most powerful planetary radar system, and we use it to uh, characterize these near-Earth asteroids that sometimes come very close to the Earth, although luckily they are not uh, impacting the Earth. Right, and but this one particular asteroid um, was had an unusual feature on it. Yes, so and with the radar system, we can get images of these asteroids, and this specific one happened to have these kind of hills and ridges on its like closer ridge uh, that we illuminated with radar. And now that we're all wearing masks and uh, securing ourselves from getting infected by a specific virus, <laughs> even this asteroid seemed like it was actually wearing a mask because of those features that we could see in the radar images. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was pretty interesting. The, um, the images are quite striking. Um, and do you have any idea of what this feature actually is, what it's made of? So it's probably uh, some kind of crater. So in our radar images, we see like a very bright leading edge. Uh, but then this one happened to have like a ridge which could be the edge of the crater that was creating like this secondary reflective uh, line kind of a little bit behind the, the leading edge. And that was creating a shape that looked a little bit like a face mask look from the side. Hmm. So you think it was actually an indent and not a you know a mini ridge a hill coming out of there then yeah so it could be like the back edge of the uh, of the of a crater that's not looking directly at us but it's a little bit inclined huh oh, that's interesting and so would there be material you know um, quartz or uh, something with a really you know high reflectivity inside the crater or is it mainly with an asteroid like that mainly it's being about, homogeneous? It's about the geometry. So surface facets that are uh, perpendicular to the line of sights are the most reflective. So if you imagine like a shape of a crater that's that you look in a little bit inclined direction so that you can see like a that the back edge of the crater is perpendicular to the line of sights. Mm -hmm. And what, what got you interested in, in looking at this particular asteroid? One thing that makes this asteroid interesting is that it's, it's a little bit bigger than majority of the asteroids that, that come this close to the Earth. So this one is almost two kilometers in diameter. And well, these asteroids are the ones that can have these craters that can bring out interesting surface features. Sometimes they even have moons. Uh, so that's one of the other things we check in asteroids, that if, if we could see like natural satellites going around them. Hmm. That's especially interesting. If if we are planning, for example, impact uh, risk mitigation technologies, 
Well, we don't do it in our Ziva Observatory, but there, NASA has this Planetary Defense Coordination Office, and they, one of the things they do is plan technologies that, that could uh, help in case we, or our optical surveys discovered an asteroid that would be impactful. Mm. And what were some of the advantages of using uh, radio uh, wave wavelengths in general and Arecibo in particular to study asteroids? Well, radar is complementary to the optical in a sense that we can discover new asteroids, but when the optical surveys discover them, the orbits are usually not completely refined from the first point. So oh, we can do very, very precise orbital refinements because we measure the range to the asteroid, whereas the optical surveys look at the position in the plane of sky. So we provide the third dimension. And also compared to the optical uh, methods, we can get better images of asteroids. So for example, the images that you could see for this asteroid, you couldn't see anything even close to this taken with optical cameras, unless you have a spacecraft that's carrying the optical camera to the asteroid. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And this particular asteroid, uh, 1998 RG, this is, um, is, is, this is a fairly, pretty much a neighboring asteroid to Earth. It yes, stays it within is. the inner solar system. Is it, how often does it visit us? Um, well, it depends like how close do you want it, how close do you measure? So for example, this one, this time it comes 16 times further than the distance to the moon. And this is happening on April 29th. Uh, in 2079, it's coming even closer approximately four times closer. It's not going to impact us, <laughs> don't worry. Uh, but yeah, it will come very close again in 2079. Mm. And it will come sort of close also a few times between those times, but not as close as now or not as close as in 2017. Mm. And, These, uh, and 1979 are the, definitely the closest ones. Mm. And hopefully by 2079 will be advanced enough to uh to land some men and women <laughs> yeah. on it and see what happens or at least some robots um and so you know a lot of people say that you know probably the biggest reason that dinosaurs are extinct right now is because they did not have a program to look for near earth asteroids one of their radars so <laughs> Their, their, their space program was severely lacking, apparently. Um, and so uh, can you give us a little update on, you know, how many objects are out there? What do we know? Um, how close are we to, you know, how close are any objects getting to us that we know of? Well, actually, 100, uh, about 100,000 tons of the same material that the asteroids are made of falls on the Earth every day. But most of it comes in such small quantities that we barely even notice them, or we see them as shooting stars or bovolites. And if we're talking about bigger and bigger bodies, then the impacts are less and less frequent. So for example, a couple of times in a century, a 20 meter asteroid hits us. For example, I think in 2014, if you remember uh, something called Chelyabinsk meteor, it hit the uh, city of Chelyabinsk in Russia. Mm -hmm. All right, and right. it was like approximately 20 meters across. It exploded in the atmosphere, it broke some windows, uh, but nobody died. All right, I never knew that was incredible. I think it was 1,100 people reportedly had, had to go to the hospital. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. um, so how much warning do you think we would have for, let's say, something 100 meters across that could do uh, some serious depends, damage? Depends on the success of the 
the space programs. So there are several optical surveys that are continuously looking for, for asteroids. Uh, almost all asteroids that are one kilometer or bigger have already been discovered. So those shouldn't be uh, sneaking behind our backs, <laughs> so to say. Mm -hmm. uh, but there is still a lot of work to do with, for example, 140 meters and bigger than those, uh, and especially smaller than those. And that's usually considered the limit for, for something called potentially hazardous asteroids. Mm -hmm. And could anything that you know of and what, what could be done if we did see something like that? There are things that could be done depending how much warning time do we have and what kind of target we are talking about. And that's why this, this characterization of asteroids is very important because we want to increase the probability that if an asteroid is covered that could impact the Earth, then we already have a good idea of, of asteroids overall and we have test speed maybe uh, these deflection techniques uh, I don't know if you've heard of the DART mission. Oh, the DART, right, sure. Yeah, so DART mission or double, uh, double asteroid. Uh, Rendezvous. Run, uh, yeah. Let me check. Double asteroid redirection test. Mm -hmm. So that's a practical test on seeing how those, those uh, deflection techniques could work and that's happening in 2022. So stay tuned for that. It'll be very interesting. And also our ZIP Observatory will be in a significant role with, with that mission of measuring the, the changes that a kinetic impactor could have on a, a moon that has a satellite. Right. That's super. Well, you do uh, doing some fantastic work and thank you very much, Dr. Perky. It was wonderful to have you on the show. Well, thank you for, for interviewing me. It's an hour. Take care. Please stay safe, stay healthy, and keep your wonder alive. If you enjoyed this episode of The Cosmic Companion, please download and share the episode on YouTube or on any major podcast provider. For more details on space and astronomy news, please visit thecosmiccompanion.com or thecosmiccompanion.net. Hmm.